Hello everyone, this is Menz here. I'm going to be doing a preview of the new Tier 8 Wheeled Light Tank, the Panhard EBR-75. Now, do note the stats of this tank are not finalized, where it's still in testing. Wargaming is allowing community contributors like myself and other players to test this tank before they release it um, as a sold premium tank. Now, this does classify as a light tank. It is a wheeled vehicle to where it does play slightly differently than lights. And I know a lot of people are excited about the wheeled vehicles coming up since they basically add a new game mechanic into the game. Since without tracks, they do uh, drive differently and perform differently than, you know, a standard light tank or even a wheeled or a non-wheeled vehicle itself. Now, currently, uh, this tank, the way it's balanced, uh, you know, it looks very similar, as you can see here, to other French um, tanks already, like comparing it to the Batchat 12T. Similar in shape, uh, size-wise, it's a little bit larger, uh, since the wheels have it stay a little higher off of the ground. However, though, uh, the way they have this balanced is more or less, you have very low V-range, but very high mobility. Um, and also a pretty solid and easy-to-use gun as well. Now, let's get into a quick comparison here, and then I'm going to have a couple battles going on. Uh, basically showing off the Panhard uh, playing in Redshire and also Fjords. And then finally, after that, doing what, you know, more or less a breakdown of how I feel like they should tweak this tank a little bit to make it better. I do like this tank so far. I think it's just on par with Tech Tree Tier 8 light tanks, if not you know, a little lower or higher depending on your viewpoint, but balance-wise, I feel like it's it's very close to what it should be. Um, I'm not as low on it as some other uh, people you'll see making videos and content of it uh, because, you know, we don't need ourselves a repeat of an LT432, etc., etc., insert overpowered Tier 8 Premium to where it's close to where Tier 8 Tech Tree lights are and I'll get more to that after uh, the video. Going into the comparison tool here, you're not able to add the Panhard in there. However, pulling its stats up here, you can do a little, uh, basically, uh, lowdown of the stats. The Panhard listed here as far as stat-wise. I'm just going to summarize uh, just general characteristics to where, like, comparing it closely to the Batchat 12T, these crew setups and equipment setups, they all have vertical stabilizers, optics, because the Panhard does not have access to Binox, and then ventilation. However, if it does have access to a rammer, uh, say like the LT-432, it has a rammer instead of vents. But all the crews have brothers in arms, camouflage, uh, you know, obviously like six cents, but uh, not that that matters, recon, situational awareness. Uh, they all have the same crew setups, you know, to add those on there to make it equal. But you can notice basically two uh, shells or two rounds basically per magazine, unlike the four on the Batchat, three on the ELC-90. So your alpha is not as high um, as those. It's closer to a single shotgun, and that's honestly what this feels like because you shoot uh, you, your second shot one and a half seconds later than the first round in the magazine. And it only takes 9.88 seconds to reload uh, said magazine to where it feels really nice, the gun. It's got, you know, decent pop to it. And also the penetration at 180, pretty good for a tier, tier 8 light towards the higher end. And 220 for the premium round isn't bad either. Like not straight up the best in uh, penetration compared to all tier 8 lights, but it's towards the top end of it. Um... No, where more or less I like the gun. Like it's accurate. You know the aiming time's not existent. Gun depression's okay. Gun elevation's a little low. Um, but the DPM is something to where 1800. You know 1846 in this comparison. It is noticeably lower than some other tier eight lights and specifically um, tier eight premium light tanks, as you can see here, like the LT432, the T92. But I feel like the, the DPM does need a little bump up because like the Batch Hat 12T at 1648 uh, for its DPM, it has those two extra shells. So it kind of evens out to where like the ELC even 90 is just 
terrible with its CPM, but that has 220 damage on its shells. The where I feel like DPM wise, it should be closer, you know, right at or under, um, say like 1950 to like 2000 ish with this comparison with the cruise and everything. Now, going down to some other stats here. You know, hit points are pretty low towards the lower end um, of tier 8 lights. No armor. You know, it's not the LT432 with its insane armor for a light. Specific power here is in line with other tier 8 lights, you know, except for the ELC and 90. Uh, that's pretty uh, low. One thing to note here when you're looking at these stats uh, the top speed, you know, 60 forward and backwards, it's literally the same going forward or reverse in this tank. There's no difference between the two outside of when you switch into rapid mode, which you'll see in the uh, battles. Uh, in that mode, you can go up to 80 kilometers an hour forward and backwards. And if you hold W and space when you're standing still, you can charge basically your, you can rev your engine up. And then when you release, you fly uh, basically at top speed within a second. So that's something to where the top speed listed here is a little bit different depending on the mode you're in and that kind of charge um, capability. You only can do that going forward and not reverse. Um, otherwise, forward and reverse speeds are the same. Traverse speed looks terrible here. However, this listed value is for when you're in rapid mode, I feel like where you're having that 80 kilometers an hour forward and backwards, but lower traverse speed to where when you switch into cruise mode, as you can see here, it only takes 0.2 seconds to switch between these. You have higher basically maneuverability, so turning, and you also can cross over, um, say like little rubble and rocks and stuff easier without like flipping your tank over. Moving down to concealment, I see a lot of people misstating the concealment on this tank. It's actually pretty darn good to wear, you know, 40.21 here uh, with full camouflage, brothers in arms, 100% crew, the wear and camouflage added on it. The wear that's just beneath the ELC even 90. Pretty darn good for a tier 8 light, especially considering the size of this light. It's a lot larger than, you know, it's even larger than the batch at 12t usually camouflage is based off of the size of the tank to where they're breaking the mold a little bit here for this tank um, giving wheeled vehicles it seems like better camouflage as a whole because getting down to the v range it's pretty bad 377 uh with this crew setup and equipment setup compared to you know 484 on the T92 or like 460 on the batch at and elc even 90 450 on the lt432 it's terrible the v-range uh, like i'll get more to that later after the two battles coming up here the where you know hopefully enjoy them they're really awesome and fun to watch like this tank's really fun to play the where after my two battles i'll go into how i feel like this tank should be just tweaked a little bit mainly it comes down to slight changes to the view range not much though i'll explain that more later and also little buffs to like the dpm but this tank so far i feel like they're close on the balance to where i don't think it needs significant changes i feel like a lot of the negativity coming out about this tank or i guess i guess concerns about this tank i'll rephrase that comes from light tanks in general not being the easiest type type of tanks to play nor like straight up the most effective like they're not like a heavy that can plow through and carry a team like that they're a lot harder and a lot of maps screw them over. So I feel like a lot of the concerns come from comparing this to like broken tier eight uh, premium lights already released or, you know, just tier eight premiums in general and different types of tanks. Whereas, you know, not a ton of people play lights as like their main class. Some people do, but most stick to like heavies, TDs, mediums. But anyway, enjoy the battles. I'll see you afterwards. And, um, you know, more or less, I'll go into how I feel like they should tweak this rebalance-wise. All right, so we have Redshire here. Now, this is a pretty good map for the Panhard, given that it's pretty open. And, you know, you have a lot of room to kind of move around, scout, kind of get a few shots in here or there. Um, I'm going to be hoping to kind of push uh, through the center and just, you know, more or less scout for my team. And um, 
hopefully not get shot up too much. <laughs> Unfortunately here, a couple of my teammates decided to shoot me here. Thank you very much guys. Uh, you guys or will uh, forever be on my blacklist. But you can see here switching into the uh, cruise mode, uh, more or less, you know, you get up to that 80 kilometers an hour, uh, which is pretty uh, useful to where even though your listed value is only 60 kilometers an hour, you can get up to that 80 uh, by switching into the cruise mode. You'll notice uh, when I'm in that, uh, basically when you look at the speedometer, that's where it's kind of flashing and kind of lit up. But when you switch off of cruise mode, uh, where you have more mobility, you're capped at 60 kilometers an hour, uh, but you can turn better. Now, so far, you know, the lack of U-range, you know, kind of hurts this tank here to where, you know, I spot the WZ-120 uh, FT. However, you know, they're able to easily spot me as well at the same time. Now, my one wheel got taken out there, which you notice it doesn't kill your mobility entirely. Uh, you can repair it and keep going. Um, however, you know, it does uh, dramatically affect uh, the ability for you to turn. But got a nice 1,000 assist here so far. You have to be really careful um, in this tank. Um, you know, more or less, you don't have much HP. So you can be pretty much killed by two shots by some higher tier ta tanks. Even at tier 8, some TDs can really mess you up. So, you know, more or less, it's... Is definitely difficult to play if you get shot up. So I see an opportunity here, which to me the best part of this tank is that mobility and flexibility. Uh, you know, you have the awesome mobility, whether it's the raw speed in the cruise mode or being able to have pretty good speed with 60 kilometers an hour forward and reverse, uh, but the better turning in the, you know, out of cruise mode. However, with your accurate gun, on top of uh, the decent penetration and decent DPM. I know it's not as crazy as single shot uh, like tier 8 lights, uh, like the LT432, um, uh, the T92, stuff like that, but you can kind of get in to where you need uh, you need it and kind of just do a little bit of damage, uh, scoot away, you know, kind of pull in and out of the battle. Now, unfortunately here, um, you'll notice you can easily flip yourself in this tank. This was pretty embarrassing uh, to do this. I did it live, and I'm pretty much just stuck here. Uh, if you look closely, pretty much my wheel caught the inside of the basically uh, the the bridge here, and underneath it, to where when you uh, get caught on stuff like that, your wheel will actually try to pull you up. Whether it's like a rock, uh, more so than tracks, to where you can easily get caught on objects. And kind of start climbing and you don't want to start climbing um, it's helpful in you know getting over like small rocks and obstacles like that where you can traverse easier over things like that however um, it makes it a lot harder when you don't want to do something like this fortunately uh, arrowhead man is coming to my rescue here in the Udez. I was really lucky, someone who watches my stream, I don't think he noticed it was me at first, but um, someone who watches my stream was actually in uh, this battle and he helps flip, flips me over, which at this point, I only have 126 damage and you know, a thousand assists, so not really a good fight so far. Now the auto aim, you'll notice here, uh, you only have to click on a tank um, you don't have to, or near a tank, I should say. You don't have to click directly on it to where uh, kind of the improved auto aim here. I know there used to be a mod for it. Now Wargaming's incorporating it in for wheeled vehicles. It's pretty nice because it takes a lot of uh, aiming um, out. Granted, I guess shot my teammate there. It takes a lot of aiming out of the equation when you're having to focus on driving because uh, you need to not get hit with your low HP, low armor. And, you know, more or less, you can get yourself killed pretty easily by driving and, you know, getting to where you don't want to be. As of right now, though, kind of recovered. I'm staying away from that bridge. Um, <laughs> my arch nemesis there. But deciding to push up here, you know, the 80 kilometers an hour and going a little bit further or over it going downhill, it's pretty nice. Uh, and then you swap off of it when you need to. I pretty much stay in it most of the time, though, until... 
uh, more or less, you know, I get really close to tanks. Then you swap off of it. You know, it takes a fraction of a second to where it does kind of jarringly make you slow down, um, whether you're switching into the cruise mode or out of it. But deciding, you know, to kind of try something different here, um, we're going to try to uh, eventually push over here into these TDs to where, you know, it's really hard to track this tank when it's going as fast as it is. To where testing my luck here, but I knew the AMX 5120 was damaged. I was lucky though, I was able to finish him out there uh, with two shots. But the Udez doesn't really stand a chance at trying to uh, track me um, as far as me trying to circle him, even while I'm in the cruise mode. But so far, plan's working out. I'm just popping in and more or less trying to take out their low HP tanks. Where the strength of this tank, you know, really like hammering at home is to me it's you know it's it's comparable to the batch at 12T, but you know the mobility obviously is better, but you have less alpha and of course better camouflage at the cost of you know the less alpha and more or less the view range. So to me this tank it does need a little bit of tweaking. Uh, again, like this is just a preview of this tank. The stats are not finalized. But I do feel like I was kind of skeptical about wheel vehicles, where if they're like this, like this is just the tier 8 premium, where of course there's going to be, you know, other ones, and especially tier 9 and 10 in the tech tree, which will be better than this, uh, obviously, but, you know, at higher tiers. When it comes down to it, like, I was kind of surprised how fun I had in this tank, because I don't particularly like uh, like light tanks or do as well um, as you would expect in a light tank even though they are a little bit weak but um, let's get to the end uh, game screens here and um, you know more or less they'll be popping up here to where we had a pretty good battle master badge first class we had 1200 damage uh, 2700 um, assists there All right, so Fjord's here. Now, not exactly the best map for a light tank, at least in my opinion. I'm not very good at lights on Fjord's. However, I'm going to try to, you know, kind of not boost myself everywhere, anywhere I shouldn't be, but get myself into the center, uh, more or less, and try to spot a little bit. Now, one thing you'll see, uh, like other people playing this tank and testing it, is, like, technically... Like, you could possibly even, like, dart yourself up over, like, places like that that are, that are pretty steep. Now, Wargaming is going to be removing those boosts uh, when these wheeled vehicles come into the game. Whether it's just a premium or when the whole, uh, basically, tech tree comes in, they are removing those. Now, I stupidly take a pretty bad hit there. The Jackson knocked out, uh, more or less, it showed up down here. It knocked out that entire side. I'm pretty sure that happens when it knocks out, um, like, takes a wheel out entirely, where I needed to repair that because I was not going to be going anywhere. But safely, otherwise than that, got myself up to this spot, where, you know, a normal light tank, you could try to do that, but most, most likely you're going to die, in my opinion. But seeing what I get from here, the where when it comes down to, like, this tank playing it right now like again like the stats aren't final uh, to where they are looking to change them but one thing people need to you know basically take into account you have almost elc even 90 camouflage levels which this p43 bis it can't even see me when i'm shooting at it meanwhile even with the view low view range like i do think it needs a smidgen like 20 meters worth more um at most it was really difficult for that tank to spot me there, to where I finally got spotted at the end, but, you know, your gun, unlike the ELC evens, you lose that, like, alpha strike, but it's a lot more reliable because of the better accuracy, better penetration, and also the better DPM, to where even though you only have two shots, to me the two shots feel nice, uh, to where... With this mobility, you know, you can kind of get two shots off really fast and zip away. 
with three, you would be able to probably use that third um, kind of round in the clip. However, to me, you know, I, I kind of like the low reload in between the clips because it always keeps you in the fight. Whereas if they add a third in, like, they'd have to basically lower the uh, reload between the, basically the drum and the auto loader since this isn't an auto reloader. And to me, that would make it feel more, it would make it feel similar to the Bat Chat 12T. And then once they start doing that, then the Bat Chat 12T starts looking a little weak because, you know, albeit it will still have more alpha, say with four shots instead of the three on this, then, you know, the Bat Chat 12T starts having less penetration, less accuracy, a lot less DPM, where, you know, it's really hard uh, kind of figuring out how to balance this, to where if you just make it have a larger clip like other uh, light tanks, uh, like the standard French lights, then you start treading in their territory, and pretty much you're just releasing a more versatile, more mobile, you know, basically better light tank to where it's more reliable, you just sacrifice view range. To where, you know, it's really tricky balance wise. But I do think how it is currently in the game here, like, I'm taking a little bit of damage here, take my two shots to where you're gonna hit most of your shots in this thing. And you're going to struggle penetrating a couple things, like higher tiers, um, unless you, you know, don't carry much premium, or if you try to tackle, like, a super heavy. It's going to be difficult, like any other uh, light tanks. Now, you'll notice trying to charge here, I've done it a few times to where it will damage your engine if you continue doing it, which I hit an invisible wall here. <laughs> and the E25 caught me at, like, the funniest moment. I was like, crap, I'm going to die. However, you can go reverse very fast in this tank. Pretty much the same forward and backwards. To where I was able to scoot away, barely survive here. The E25 backs off because he was going to die uh, by my E25 on my team. But, albeit the tank can't turn, you know, without moving, which is a little annoying. The going forward and backwards at the same speed, you can't really... You can't really explain it until you actually play it. Um, where I know Wargaming's tested it out with other tanks before. Um, and like certain tanks, say like the Swedish uh, TDs, like the Udes and stuff, they're pretty mobile forward and backwards. Um, it's just this, you know, it's pretty awesome for a light to where you don't have to turn around. You just have to know which way you're pointing. I've screwed up a lot, which if anyone caught my live stream when I played these battles, sometimes I'd be facing the wrong direction. And, you know, which here I end up stopping. The E25 was trying to follow me because I was zipping by there at 80 kilometers an hour. And just stopping, he had this, you know, he overturned and I was able to kill him. But so far, my impressions of this tank, again, like the stats aren't finalized. Like, I'm having fun in this, the where, you know, typically light tanks, most people can agree, you don't see a lot of people, unless they like really like them, a lot of people going out of their way to play them, because they're a little bit weak right now, um, as far as like standard battles, most people would agree, mediums typically can do the job uh, pretty well, and you know, losing a little bit of camouflage obviously, and also just raw spotting ability, but this tank, it's just pure, it's pure fun where is it like the best like you're gonna drive across the battle and just completely light up the scoreboards damage wise and you know basically carry your team that way like a heavy tank or a medium tank no like that's how you get tanks like the lt432 that everybody can agree that tanks a lot better than other tier 8 premium lights and even or i should say tier 8 tech tree lights and even tier 8 premium light tanks all right so getting down to like is the panhard going to be a fun tank i personally think so the where you know it's definitely different than light tanks the where watching those two battles you can see like the tank's effective it's really versatile you can get around the map you can change into two different modes for raw speed or mo more uh turning capability and the gun's pretty solid like it doesn't do a lot of alpha nor does it have the best dpm but it's a little bit of everything to where 
you know, basically it has fun factor in my opinion, which is tough for me to say because I'm not, I don't like light tanks a lot of times, but this one is fun to play so far, um, especially with the different, um, basically gameplay mechanics with the wheels. Now, I do feel like this tank needs some changes to it, um, which this is why it's a preview. This is not a review because this tank will change before it comes out. But pulling up the first thing, so view range. You can note here uh, for the pan hard, 310 meters of view range. A lot of people have hammered this home, including myself. It's terrible for tier eight light. You can see the bat chat 12T 380 along with the ELC even 90. Uh, the T92 has 400, and then LT432 380, HWK12 has 410. So significantly lacking. The one problem where some people, I feel like, want more view range than they should give this thing, if they give the Panhard, say, the same uh, view range as like the ELC of 90 at 380, or even like 370, um, the ELC of 90, you know, ha doesn't have the best specific power, so it's a little sluggish at times, especially turning, and, you know, the gun, albeit worse, on the ELC even 90, like DPM wise, it does have higher alpha. If you give it like comparable like V range to other tier eight lights, uh, the role of the Panhard, since it has so much kind of versatility to it, and even on city maps, if you're like sitting behind a corner and you charge that boost, you can dart out and sometimes get past people without them even hitting you. You know, if you zip by 80 kilometers an hour, the where it actually I played on a quite a few city maps uh, on the live stream last night, and before so too. It actually works to where it does make it a little bit better to play on, um, like city maps and like enclosed maps. Because unlike other lights, where you kind of if you're stuck behind a rock, you need to accelerate for a few seconds. This one just darts out at full speed. But with the V range, I feel like it needs maybe like 330 meters, 340 at the most. The where I feel like the V-Range should be a downside because the maneuverability, whether you're in either mode for raw speed or the turning capability, it gives you like the best of both worlds when it comes to lights. Like a lot of lights either have like raw speed and their turning capability is a little lower or they're a little bit more mobile but their top speed's a little lower. For most lights, I know some uh, break that mold. The where this, you know, you're able to pick and choose what you want. And with the wheels, you know, you're able to climb over a couple obstacles a little differently. You can make jumps without taking damage, which is pretty awesome. Like, as long as you land flat, uh, like there's a clip playing up of me on airfield jumping off a cliff, not taking any damage falling off of it because you land flat, you don't get much damage from falling. If you are a little bit, um, say, tilted right or left, you will die uh, like other lights and other tanks in general. But the wheels allow you to make jumps and stuff without actually damaging your tank. So with the V-Range, I feel like 330, 340 at the most, where it would still be worse than uh, standard light tanks. And like you don't have access to Binox on the Panhard because it's really an active light tank. You're always supposed to be moving, um, especially with the really good accuracy and accuracy on the move. The where, you know, they don't let you put Binox on this. And I, I don't personally think that anyone would want to put them on there anyway. But more or less, when it comes down to it, the view range, I feel like should be lower than lights significantly, but not as much as it is currently. 310's a little too low. Like 330, 340 would still allow other lights to pass the scout a lot better. When it come to, comes to active scouting, they'd be, you know, comparable. But, um... More or less, that's one thing that where, before I get into the gun, uh, when it comes to against TDs as well, it's still, it preserves a little bit, you know, with a tank this fast, you're going to be able to dart in and out of places as well. With the v lower V range, TDs still counter you a bit because you're not able to spot them as easily like sitting behind a bush or, you know, even firing sometimes at like max V range unless you get up a little closer. So TDs still are like a hard counter to you. Whereas, you know, other lights, when a TD shoots and they're at like max view range, a lot of times you'll spot them. Uh, this tank won't. 
so it's preserving a little bit of um i guess you know balances against different tanks when it comes to uh, the gameplay now uh, pulling up uh, these things here these are basically my stats in uh, tier 8 lights and i exclude it some uh, because obviously um tier 8 uh, or not tier 8 light tanks haven't been you know tier 1 through 10 uh, for the entire entirety of world of tanks to where i excluded some to where my battles came before um basically tier 10 lights the only exception is the m4190 but that tank hasn't really changed um whereas you know when i played like the wz132 or the m41 bulldog uh stat wise you know i played them when they're different as far as that uh, balance goes granted you know these are very small sample sizes the where just Focusing on another element I feel like this tank needs. I'm fine with the two round autoloader. It could have three if they wanted to go that way, but I feel like that would take a little bit away from the batch at 12T and that tank being um, kind of the burst um, at tier 8 for the French tanks. I feel like DPM wise, you know, it was a little over 1800. I feel like they could give it like another 100 uh, DPM maybe like 150 at the most but not a ton given that the batch hat 12t was sitting down at like 1600 dpm but just looking at these stats albeit 12 battles in the pan hard you know i averaged uh, 956 damage 649 for assist damage low over 900 experience 83 percent win rate uh three basically three and a half tanks spotted low over 1.1 destroyed like comparing that straight up to the batch at 12t batch at 12t does a lot more damage pretty much the same assist damage wise almost the same experience win percentage you can't compare the two much but i added it in anyway just because of small, small sample sizes a little bit less on the batch at 12t for spotted tanks that's due to the pan hard getting out really early in the battles and you know batch at pretty much the same destroyed the where I feel like raising the view range a little bit up on the pan hard, but not to where it uh, kind of creeps into uh, standard light tanks. And also raising the DPM up a little higher will bring it just a little bit up to where it won't be necessarily better than, say, the Batch Hat 12T or other Tech Tree Tier 8 lights. But it will help it a little bit because it, it needs something a little bit more to where it has the fun factor. It has the versatility, but without, say, the really high DPM or the high burst that some tier 8 lights have or the higher damage per shot, it's kind of jack of all trades, but it needs just a smidgen more DPM. Um, just looking across to other uh, tanks as well, you can kind of notice, like, as far as, like, I'm not the best light tank player, I'll admit it, where my damage in the pan hard, assist damage in the pan hard, and like spotted tanks destroyed tanks it's more or less in line with other tier eights when you look at them as a whole here to where it's on the lower end of damage which what i take from uh pretty much it's the lowest out of these uh, but a few others i looked at um albeit their stats are a little teen it it basically it needs a little bit more damage potential when it comes to like assisting and spotting it does that well enough but i feel like a little buff on the v range would help as well i don't think it needs any changes to like hp gun depression uh camouflage anything like that or mobility it's just small little tweaks to the gun and also the v range but nothing significant because say buffing the dpm like i said by 100 or 150 um or if they wanted to give it another uh round to make it three albeit i don't think that would be the best choice because it would start making it feel more or less the same as uh, some other lights um, and buffing the rearrange a little bit it would bring these values up you can see here just up a little higher to where I feel like the batch hat 12t would still be the better damage dealer albeit it won't be as good as spotting or like flexing to certain areas whereas the pan hard would be a little bit better um, kind of being a nuisance and spotting things uh, but a little bit less deadly as far as damage but anyway, like when it comes down to it, like hopefully people uh, provide constructive feedback 
because wargaming they're trying to you know let the players you know provide feedback whether it's cc's or people that watch us or you know people if they get lucky with rental codes uh, to be able to test the tank and have input into uh, what wargaming does here but ultimately like i know this video is really long especially with two battles and me ranting and kind of babbling on here i just hope as a community like we had a lot of controversy like you know i'm recording this video it's right before christmas here 2018 where over the past like three three weeks even a little longer if you go back to like the lt432 the where the community has been you know ranting about wargaming releasing overpowered you know tier 8 tanks like the lt432 is just it's so much better than most other tier 8 lights and you know you even have the m4190 and t92 light and more or less like i hope that the community doesn't bash these tanks too much because wargaming's trying to balance them a little differently with lower v range you know more versatility and you know the different modes to where i feel like it works the where it's different for lights and honestly for like larger maps even front lines which will be coming back on a somewhat permanent basis next year this tank's going to be downright awesome where as a community and like as community contributors to hear people like the tank's a little bit weak but i don't feel like it's that much weaker than tech tree tier 8 lights we don't want another overpowered tier 8 premium light because once it's released there's not too much going back from it to where wargaming's not going to dramatically nerf or change a premium afterwards they would have to buff all other tanks up to that level which you know easier said than done but you know you have that controversy and people complaining about the direction and balance of the game um you know the is3a even different than light tanks but that power creep and broken tanks to where going from that to this tank to me this is a pretty well balanced tank the where the philosophy i think would work out better and i've seen people throw it around not just you know myself but other ccs the where wargaming releasing premiums to where they're pretty balanced possibly like just trying to get it close to tech tree tanks that's the model they should go with the where you have the crew training element you have you know basically the uh, basically better credits per battle and you have a different gameplay mechanism here and a fun tank to play for those that like lights the where i even like it and i don't really like light tanks that much but balance wise if it's a little underpowered or if it's right in line with tech tree tier eights that's better than releasing an overpowered tank that com completely invalidates say 50 plus different light tanks when it comes to uh, tech tree light tanks the where if they give it too much view range or give it too good of a gun it's just yet another tier 8 light that completely power creeps the ones in the tech tree and you know we're going down the same path that we're all bashing wargaming about the where ultimately i hope that they go with what it seems like they're currently balancing it as as basically different gameplay where if for whatever reason it hits the live server and it doesn't work they have some wiggle room to say keep nudging that view range up a little bit or you know adding another shell stuff like that but when it comes down to it i personally like this tank i enjoyed testing it um, i know a lot of people are excited about wheeled vehicles to where i'm sure the french wheeled vehicles are not going to be the last ones added to the game but ultimately i feel like this tank was fun I think it performs good more more so just out of the fun factor stat wise it holds up against tier 8 light tanks a little bit worse stat wise than tier 8 premium lights that are broken but to me that's a good thing because you can't complain that wargaming being money money grabbing greedy and stuff and then complain that they're trying to release a fun and unique uh tier 8 brand new game mechanism uh, premium light tank just because it's not as good as say lt432 but anyway thank you very much for watching this video i know it was long hopefully um you know enjoyed it if you have any kind of feedback about the panhard ebr here feel free to leave it in the comment section um you know basically or on my discord if you're on my discord pop into my live stream 
and kind of uh, discuss this because you know these tanks are going to be coming out uh, somewhat in the distant future like they're not coming out tomorrow but more or less there is still some room for giving some feedback and seeing what the community wants to kind of tweak this tank a little bit so thanks again for watching have a good one see you around